Hello everybody. I hope everybody's rocking as usual. I come back to you with weekly report number 40 and this report in my opinion is going to be epic and you don't want to miss it because I'm going to discuss some key parameters that may be pertaining to our economy and pertaining to you today. So please stick till the very end of this video. So as we all know, inflation is something that eats away at our standard of living that we are so used to. That is our income doesn't keep pace with the rising prices. Then the cost of living increases over time. So a high inflation rate can hurt the economy. And having said that, I just want to visit this meme. This guy gets a 3% raise, but the inflation keeps increasing to 8.5%. And on the right, what you see is a ship representing the high inflation. And what does the Fed do to bring it down? It increases the interest rates here in this example. 0.25% basis points, but it cannot do too much. So inflation has kind of become a cancer in our economy. It started in one area of the economy and then it's now spreading rapidly, infecting other areas of the economy. And it's hard to bring the inflation down in certain areas of economy, uh, such as probably rent or haircut or you know even food. It might come down, but it's quite hard. And having said that, I want to discuss a number of parameters. Very first is a consumer price inflation. I'm just going to present how it is calculated and why it is important. A, a, a projection of the US debt. So if I were to say, hey, the debt was uh, about $10 billion in Obama times back in 2011. Today it stands at $30 trillion in 2022. What is the projection for, let's say, 2025? And that will probably shock most of you. And Garrett Soloway, a uh, renowned technical trader, came out with this. I quote, uh, Bitcoin to 3,500. Again, well, we're just going to take a visit at that if this is a possibility. And talking about the CPI, so I think some of you might know this and some of you may not, but just to touching the CPI measures the rate of inflation in an in economy, which is probably one of the greatest threats to a healthy economy. In fact, this week, just a few days back, it was announced that the CPI came in hotter than expected, where the CPI increased by 0.4%. And what happened? Markets took a hit. So I'll just try to break down in simple words what it all means and why it is important. Because CPI measures a range of consumer spending behaviors and having said that i want to just visit this small case study that i found so in this it depicts in this table the consumers in the economy spending a percentage of their wealth on food fuel clothes and education for each of the years 2015 and 2019 so it's just a percentage breakdown of how they spend it so what cpi really measures is how much the consumer spending increased or decreased between the two years. So 2015 is the base year and 2019 is the target year. So we want to find out how the consumer pricing ha index has changed between the two years. So it's very simple. All we do is just take a, take a weighted average of 2015. Numbers just multiply, add and divide these numbers. And the same thing we do with 2019, the two columns that are highlighted. So we get two numbers for the uh, base year we had, the average spending was about $43. And for the given year, in this case, 2019, the average spending is $48. So how do we measure CPI? Very simple. Just divide this number by this number and multiply by 100. So in, in a crux, what this means is between 2015 and 19, the average price the consumer spent in the economy increased by 13.14%. And that is as simple as it is. So having said that, now that you know what CPI is, I just want to dive into the charts quickly. So you would see the CPI increased by 0.4% in the last, uh, you know, last, now it was announced uh, last one month. And this is concerning because that means we as consumers are spending more of our wealth when we are actually producing only so much while we are spending more. And at the same time, since the CPI is measuring the rate of inflation, not the inflation itself, but the rate of inflation as this is a CPI, inflation has actually come down uh, in the last uh, few months, 
However, this is not enough because the Fed has been increasing interest rates incessantly. It's increased. Now the interest rate is about 4.5%. They want to go, now it's like 4%. They want to go like 5 or 5.5%, 5 .5%, which is not really bringing down the inflation as fast. But the CPI keeps increasing. And that's a concern because increase in CPI will take a hit on the markets and the confidence and reduce consumer spending. And what does does is uh, basically uh, bring down the stock markets as well. And I just want to touch upon a little bit about the US debt, where we stand in that. 1971 is when the US went off the gold standard. And that time the US national debt was about 300 billion or dollars. Today, we stand about 30 trillion dollars. In the Obama times in 2011, just 10 years back, we stood about $11 trillion. So you see how much has come up. And this is the logarithmic scale that I've plotted. And if I were to just project this, you know, just for fun for our viewers, how much longer will it take for us to get to 50 trillion US dollars? So just, just a conservative projection. There you go, 50 trillion. So what does that mean? Well, in another four years, not 10 years, another four years, three to four years, we are already there in 50 trillion. And this is rather, uh, you know, very conservative. The way it is going, it's crazy. So I want to dive into the, uh, so, you know, these three, th these three things, the debt, the CPI and the inflation is like what the economists and the Fed sees to, you know, see how the economy works and what they can do with it to fix it. But unfortunately, it doesn't seem fixable. And having said that, I just want to get into uh, the crypto charts. I, last time I touched upon, if you saw the last video from this channel, is that this period of volatility is, uh, is similar to a couple of periods of volatility in the past, as you can see. So anything can happen. Well, moving on to the total crypto cap. You would see that we are sticking around $880 billion, which is pretty much the same as the 2017 bull market tops. And talking about the BTC USD chart, I have drawn some regression bands from for the history of bull bear cycles we have seen in Bitcoin. Here we see a draw from the top to the bottom of this bull bear cycle. And you see this pattern. And right now we are consolidating in this zone I marked as A. And here in this zone, Bitcoin trends in this $19,000, not doing too much activity. RSI is super low relative strength index. It's actually very, very stable, not seen in the history of Bitcoin this way. Um, and if you see like the past, the 2017-18 bear cycle, again, drawing the regression bands, which is nothing but the standard deviation between the, the, the two bands. Uh, again, Bitcoin dropped from 6,000 to 3,000 and staying in the zone with low RSI and same thing in the past 2015. Bitcoin dropped from 300 to 150 dollars and then it stuck to this low RSI range. In fact, it was a little high at that time, but all I want to show is like this is the low volatile range that we have. And what is a stark contrast uh, this time is for Bitcoin to drop uh, from 20,000 to 10,000 into this band marked B is going to be quite hard. In fact, in my opinion, people will be ready to sell their kidneys to get into Bitcoin, pun intended. But uh, zone A remains as my sweet spot. What Garrett Soloway said, Soloway said about 3,500 Bitcoin is the super black swan event, which probably happens once in a century where Bitcoin goes to $3,500, uh, where it's like a dot-com 2001 crash, which seems unlikely at the moment. Uh, but this is what I can say, either a spike towards $30,000 or a breakdown into the B zone. But either which way, 20,000 is my sweet spot. That is all from me in this report. I hope you have enjoyed it. I have enjoyed it thoroughly presenting this for the last one year consistently. And next week, I'm going to present my final price report. I hope you can stick out for that one. And I want to wish you a great week ahead. <laughs> Ciao.